Hey guys, um, today we are taking a look at uh, 1G Mitsubishi Eclipse. Um, this is a vehicle of mine that I've got an error code stored in the computer. I'm showing a check engine light, otherwise known as a cell light. Um, I myself poked around quite a bit in quite a long time trying to figure out what was going on here and no one really seemed to uh, post a decent enough video to really show you exactly how it is that you check this code and how you read those codes as well. Um, unless if you have an OBD1 um, data link, um, you're kind of screwed and you're stuck doing what we call an LED test or a multimeter test on these things. Um, uh, in the case of me, I actually tried to use the uh, multimeter here to show my error codes, but uh, the problem I was having with that was just the sheer fact that uh, my multimeter wasn't able to read the changes in voltage um, accurately and quickly enough to actually tell me what the stored codes were. Um, so instead what I did is I decided to move into um, the use of an LED bulb here. Um, this helped tremendously here. So we're gonna cut to the chase here. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how it is I did this. Um, so if we go ahead and look underneath the dash, what we have here is the fuse panel. Um, it's right to the left of your clutch pedal underneath here. Um, or in the case, if you got an automatic, it's on the left kick panel here. Um, but generally speaking, your OBD1 plug is actually attached to the side right here. Um, so you would see it somewhere up in this area here, uh, generally covered by a rubber boot. So what you would do is you would remove your rubber boot, okay? And what you're gonna do is probe um, pins number one and pin number 12. Um, pin number one, looking at the plug right here, is going to be the upper right-hand pin, okay? So it's gonna be the one by my pointer finger here. And then pin number 12, is going to be the bottom left hand pin, which is the pin down by my thumb here, kind of point at it there. Um, so all I did is I took the probes from my multimeter and I shoved them in there. Um, so I've got my red probe on pin number one again, which is the upper right hand here. Okay, and then I have my ground probe into actually the ground pin, which happens to be, which is pin number 12. So after doing that, I'll go ahead and follow our leads here. Um, I actually just disconnected my leads from my multimeter. Um, this way I didn't have to dick around with anything really there. And all I did was uh, bump, oh, all I did was bump those leads against this light bulb here to get this light bulb to light up. Um, the way the codes are gonna show is by a series of flashes in these um, OBD1 style um, connectors here. So what we're doing is a self-diagnostic. When these flashes come by, they come by in a series of long and short flashes. Um, in the case of, the long flash will stand for the digit 10, and then every short flash after it will stand for the digit 1. Um, so in this case, if you would see, like, let's say, three long flashes followed by three short flashes, um, that would mean um, it would be a stored code of 33. You would take the three long flashes, it's 10 per flash, so 10 times three is gonna be 30, and then your series of short flashes, three short flashes would stand for the number three, and you add those two numbers together and that would give you a stored code of 33. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and cut to the chase here. I'm actually gonna show you exactly what codes are coming across my vehicle here. Um, so we're actually just going to go ahead and turn the key on right away here. Um, for some, it's a little bit easier to uh, connect the light before you uh, actually go key on. But uh, for me, I've already done this um, and I know what my stored codes are. So I'm just going to jump right in here and I'm going to show you guys my codes. So all I'm going to do is just take this light bulb here. And we're gonna go ahead and connect it. Oh, sorry for the wicked flashing there for a second. All right, and there we go. So you can see, we're getting a series of long flashes followed by short flashes, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this code to pass here. After you get done with the short lights, that's the end of the code. So the next light is gonna be the start of the next code. So that was a long flash there, followed by a short flash. So that is code number 11. There's a long flash there, followed by two flash, uh, short flashes, so that is code number 12. There's a long, 
and then three short flashes, so that stands for the, uh, the code number 13. There's a long and a short. That's code number 11. So now we've repeated ourselves. So we've gone through every code that's been stored in my computer. Um, I could sit here for the next 30 minutes and show you this. It's just gonna continue to read the codes that are stored here. Um, so in my case, I'm, I'm throwing code number 11, 12, and 13. Um, for me, I've done the research already. Uh, code number 11 is a O2 sensor code. Um, my O2 sensor has been unplugged. I actually have a wideband O2 sensor in its place. Um, so that's an empty pigtail that would explain that um, check engine light. Otherwise, um, code number 12 is going to be a airflow meter sensor or airflow sensor if you wish. Um, and code number 13 is going to be a intake temperature sensor code. Um, the last two codes, um, in my case, code number 12 and 13, are actually all held within the mass airflow sensor of uh, first-generation Mitsubishi Eclipse. Um, but I'm hoping that this video actually helps you guys out and uh, gets you moving along so you can read them check engine codes in your cars.